beautiful woman of flourishing woman what an honor to be here with you for me this evening maybe it's a morning maybe it's an afternoon maybe you're watching on replay and i'm so incredibly honored to welcome you to this special live stream which is faulty neuroception a revolutionary approach to healing your sexuality so if you're just coming to the group i want to wholeheartedly welcome you to the world of nervous system healing and sexuality healing in a trauma sensitive way that allows you to reclaim your health your pleasure deep love for your body and actually start making love all night long so what we're going to dive into today is really deep understanding around what neuroception is what faulty neuroception is and the role it plays in your health in your sexuality and in the way you relate to your partner if you're blessed to have one so this is for you whether you have a sexual pain condition hi carla hi beautiful and uh, this is for you if you're suffering from sexual trauma from sexual numbness this is also for you if you are sexually shut down and you just kind of don't know you can't figure it out what's going on in your body what's happening inside of your sexuality and you want to you know gain a deeper understanding of what might be the possible root cause of your challenges so Carla is here with me Shay is here with me Denise is here with me welcome beautiful woman so glad to do this together so I want to start actually by sharing with you a story of one of my clients who really serves an incredible example of faulty neuroception and the way it was impacting both her sexuality and her marriage altogether so i want to share with you a story of lee who is a beautiful woman in her mid-30s she is based in australia and she has suffered with a very special sexual health condition called vaginismus for well over seven eight years as long as she was married mm -hmm. hi ina hi beautiful so if you don't know what vaginismus is vaginismus is a sexual health condition where the pelvic floor muscles are in a chronic state of contraction and that contraction can cause muscular spasms it makes the pelvic floor really really tense which can you know cause things like over reactive bladder it can cause things like um uh, cystitis a uh, lot of lot of challenges and on top of that it's pretty much impossible to have penetrative sex and it's very very difficult to feel sexual pleasure so lee came to me pretty much in a state of desperation where she was married for seven years with the love of her life they were like madly what is it called like head over heels love and they wanted to start family and it was very embarrassing for her to share that in the seven years of her marriage they never ever had intercourse and she's like, you know, what's wrong with me? Why is my body responding like that? Like, I love my husband so much. I want to have sex with him. And it's just not happening. So when we begin to, you know, address her body, her mind, emotions, to understand, like, what are the mechanics of vaginismus? Because it's one thing to be, you know, relaxing your pelvic floor muscles, which a lot of good pelvic floor therapists do, and that is value in that, and it's beautiful, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it does not go deep enough. It just does not go deep enough. And one thing I love to do with my students and clients is like, you know, why is what is happening in your sexuality actually happening in the first place? Let's strip beneath all of this like busyness or the symptoms and let's get to the core of the matters. So when we got to the core of the matters with Lee, she's like, I am just petrified of having sex and that had nothing to do with her husband it had nothing to do with the love and intimacy she shares with her partner 
it had moreover to do with some of her upbringing and a lot of religious guilt and shame that was actually stored in her body and that made her neuroception or her sense of like uh, perceiving danger in the environment lock down her pelvic floor tissues, lock down her vulva and made penetrative sex downright impossible. So what we really focused on in our work, instead of like, again, being busy and maybe looking at pelvic floor stretches or just relaxation of pelvic floor muscles, all of that valuable, don't get me wrong, but we got to the core of the matter to actually addressing her nervous system and how her nervous system is responding to, you know, being sexual, being sexually open, being sexually intimate. And by doing that, she got, oh my God, like such a deep healing in her body that in space of a couple of months, after seven years of never, ever having sex, she not only, you know, started to make an intimate, beautiful lovemaking with her partner, but they actually stepped into conceiving their baby and now they are parents, which is remarkable. So... Uh, Lee, uh, Lee transformation and Lee healing really inspired me to come on today and share with you what the neuroception is, what faulty neuroception is, and how that plays role in your sexuality, in your sexual experiences, in your sexual healing, and in everything you experience as a sexual being, as a sexual woman. So neuroception is actually a term that comes from Stephen Porges. Uh, if you don't know Stephen Porges, he is very well known in the trauma resolution world, in the nervous system world. He's the founder of the polyvagal theory. And uh, Stephen Porges has coined neuroception as really how your nervous system is perceiving whether you are in a safe situation whether you are in threatening situation or whether you are in dangerous situation. So stay with me here for a minute. This is really, really important piece. Your neuroception does not happen in your cognition. It does not happen in your conscious thought. Your neuroception is directly connected to your primal brain, is directly connected to your unconscious. So this uh, you know, primal part of your brain is constantly scanning 24 seven, you know, am I in a safe situation? Am I in a dangerous situation? Or am I in a threatening situation? Now, a cutting of Steve, Stephen Porges and the polyvagal theory, uh, you have a nerve circuits inside of your nervous system that when you feel safe, when your nervous system perceives that you're safe, you're primed for connection, you're primed for intimacy. When you are in a threatening, uh, threatening environment, you're perceiving that you're in threatening environment, uh, you're primed for flighting, like flighting away or fighting, fight or flight. And if you are in like downright dangerous situation, you're going to shut down. So we have possibility for sexual connection when our nervous system perceives our sexual partner or like the psycho-emotional space or the environment that you are in um, as a safe place to sexually connect. Or we can sexually fight with our partners, we can sexually flee with our partner if we are perceiving it as a threatening experience or possibly threatening experience or we can sexually shut down if we are perceiving something as plain, downright dangerous experience. Now, neuroception by itself is such a smart mechanism. Like we are having this conversation right here, right now, because your neuroception is actually doing its job really, really well. It's main job is to keep us alive, is to keep us well operating and moving through life. The challenge becomes, however, when our neuroception gets faulty. So faulty neuroception 
looks like feeling safe when we are in dangerous situation or feeling danger when we are in a safe situation. Let me repeat it. Faulty neuroception, it's like, hey, I am safe, but I'm actually in dangerous situation or I'm in danger, but I'm in safe situation. Now, if you're with me so far, you might be thinking, why would I possibly have a faulty neuroception or how does that possibly apply to me? Faulty neuroception, what I find is, has a lot to play with chronic sexual pain, chronic yeast infections, chronic pelvic pain, sexual shutdown, sexual numbness, because the nerves, the nerve endings, you have a lot of nervous system, not only in your pelvic floor, but obviously in your whole pelvis, you have tremendous amount of nervous system. The nervous system of your pelvis, the nervous system of your reproductive system is, uh, is perceiving whatever situation or maybe even the fact of you reaching for pleasure or you uh, desiring sexuality, you desiring sexual experience, your reproductive system is perceiving that as a dangerous. Why would that possibly be? Now, on the most obvious, on the most obvious uh, kind of realm, it can be basic things like being physically hungry or like being really, really tired and needing to rest instead of being sexually aroused, uh, needing to have, you know, nourishing meal instead of making love to your partner or uh, having intercourse with you, with your husband. So there can be like little this basic physiological needs that have to be attended to uh, first in order for your body to have possibly to be sexual. Now, on a deeper level, beneath these basic physiological needs, emotions such as anger. Maybe you're really angry at your partner and what are the neuroceptive uh, sensory nerve endings actually doing? They're like, I'm going to fight with my partner. This is a threatening situation, obviously not physically, but psycho-emotionally. And as a result, my sexuality is not going to be online. It can be emotions such as jealousy, uh, jealousy at other women, jealousy at younger, prettier version of yourself that might be possibly danger for, um, you know, stealing your partner, or like your partner looking somewhere else or your partner having desire somewhere else but yourself. That was definitely, you know, my own experience for so many years without me consciously knowing how much I'm comparing myself to other women, how much I am sexually jealous about women that have slimmer waist or longer hair or, you know, better, better shape of their bodies. I was so much suppressing my own desire. I was so much suppressing and making myself small, that was in this constant perpetuated cycles of jealousy. And guess what? I had absolutely no desire. I was completely sexually shut down. So this can play a, a lot role inside of your own sexuality. It can be things such as a lot of grief. And I have done, um, I think like two days ago, I have done a special live on the relationship between grief and sexual shutdown. I've done it on my personal Facebook page. So if you, if this is something that interests you, you can definitely go scroll through my personal Facebook page. And I think two or three days ago, I've done um, sexual shutdown and grief. But what happens a lot with deeply held grief, whether that's grief because you've lost the baby, maybe you had a miscarriage, maybe you had abortion, whatever the condition around abortion where. Maybe you've lost a loved one or even now going through COVID-19, like the, the state of world affairs are causing you a lot of deep sadness, but either you are not willing to feel it, you're not willing to, you know, make yourself fall apart, or maybe you don't have space to fall apart. Um, I have a lot of clients who have like a very busy schedules with their children 
with their work um you know they have they have small kids and it is not easy to try and fall apart when your toddlers are running around you it's not easy and i'm definitely not uh denying that and at the same time we do need to understand we do need to understand the relationship between the emotions and neuroception and the impact on your sexuality and even beneath that like beneath these deeply held emotions hi Suzanne, hi beautiful there are all the traumatic imprints whether you have been sexually abused whether you have been sexually traumatized whether like my client lee you grew up in really strict religious environment where you have been told over and over again that your body is dirty that having sexual desires is sinful where um you know bleeding and receiving period is just like sign of like you know the trouble came and now you need to really pack your sexuality because you might get pregnant and you might get std you know we might think consciously that like how is that possibly going to impact our tissues but the truth is that your body is listening all the time these last 15 minutes that you were here with me, your body, your sexuality has been listening these 15 minutes. And pretty much what we receive from the age zero to seven, like all the beliefs, all the stories, all the experiences we get as a young girls about love, about sex, about intimacy, about relationships, what we see our parents showing us and holding true for themselves gets literally imprinted in our unconscious. It gets imprinted in our primal brain. I pretty much never get shocked when I hear woman after woman telling me I have sexual pain. I have sexual numbness. I am sexually disconnected. I am sexually shut down. I feel nothing. I can't feel pleasure. I don't have orgasm. I have hard time reaching orgasm. I have sexual shame. I have sexual troubles. It's like literally story after story after story. I am not surprised about it because when we see the environment we grew up in, when we look at the cultural narrative when we look at the suppression of the feminine when we look at the impact of you know living in highly sexually violent and highly sexually traumatized uh world altogether to me it's no surprise that on a sexual level we suffer in such a deep way and all of this might sound heavy but I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to be the messenger of good news that it does not have to be this way. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to live in pain. You don't have to live with sexual numbness. You don't have to live with sexual shutdown. You don't have to live in burning, in disconnection, in suppression, in packing this part of yourself and like burning it in the depths of i don't know your sitting room it does not have to be this way and it starts it boils down the foundation of this is to start rewriting the nervous system and actually begin to signal to this neuroception part of your nervous system that you being in your sexual pleasure you being in your sexual aliveness you being like sexually awakened empowered woman is a safe experience it's safe to be sexual it's safe to be sexually open it's safe to be sexually awakened and we want to bring that as an experience as a lived experience in your body so what I'm going to do for you is actually guide you through a simple sensory feedback process, simple nervous system awakening process that will allow you to start ameliorating or start transforming any experience of either numbness or irritation or pain that you might have in your reproductive system. 
So I want you to uh, actually decide for yourself what sensation or what like sensational experience you're going to work with. And you have three to choose, choose from. Either numbness or pain or tension discomfort. So numbness, pain, tension discomfort. And you can let me know in the comments below which one are you going to work with, you're going to choose to work with in this simple neurosensory exercise. So for the exercise, you want to be comfortable. You can do this sitting up, you can do this lying down. You want to invite your body into a place of comfort. And I'm gonna invite you to start by taking a deep breath. So you'll breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Once more, in through the nose and out through the mouth. And maybe choosing to close your eyes if it helps you with connection. And I would love for you to connect with your pelvis. Connect with your pelvic ball. So you have permission to feel any part, any location of yourself from the belly button through your two pelvic bones, the front of the pelvis, the back of the pelvis, all the way down to the pelvic floor. And you want to locate any part of your pelvis that might feel contracted if you're working with contraction, that might feel numb if you're working with numbness, or that might be holding some pain if you're working with pain. So locate in your mind's eye a part of your pelvis, a part of your reproductive system that feels either numb or contracted or in pain. And as you are attuning, as you're feeling, as you're connecting to this part of your pelvis, I want you to say to yourself, maybe by placing your hands on your heart, it is safe for me to feel. It is safe for me to feel. It is safe for me to feel. And now connecting deeply, deeply into your heart, into this essence in your heart that knows love, that knows love, that knows nourishing intimate love in an intimate way. I want you to start looking at the part of your reproductive system, whether it's the numb part or the contracted part. I want you to start looking at it from the place in your heart so you're observing the piece, the location in your pelvis from your heart. You're viewing it from your heart. And really noticing what does it feel like to notice this pain or this contraction from my heart? What does it feel like to look at it, to observe it from this unconditional place of love inside of my heart? And just be in the energy of viewing this part of you from your heart. Beautiful. And see if we can add more love into the part that feels contracted. So you will begin to stream directly from your heart. You're going to stream love into your pelvis. You're going to stream love into this piece of contraction or numbness or pain. So with each inhale, you're allowing the love in your heart to descend down into this place of numbness or contraction. And with every exhale, you allow the love to nourish this part of you, to deeply permeate with love with beautiful, nourishing love, this part of you. 
And you want to do this for a few more breaths. Really feeling the connection, really feeling the nourishment, really receiving the love from your heart in this part of you. And notice how it shifts. Notice how this numbness or this contraction is starting to shift, is starting to change. And now you will ask this part of you one question. You're going to ask this part of you one question. You're going to give this part a permission to speak, permission to express itself. What do you need the most? So maybe placing hand on this part of you and really attuning to the answer. What do you need the most? What do you need the most? And just listening. Just listening. Maybe the answer is coming verbally. Maybe the answer is coming as an image or sensation or a quiet whisper. You're safe to feel, you're safe to experience. Noticing as this love in your heart continues to shine down on this part in your pelvis. And this part in your pelvis is softening, is receiving, is becoming more and more relaxed. Your body is becoming lighter and lighter. And now just taking a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. slowly opening your eyes, thanking your heart for giving this part of you love, thanking this part for being receptive and open and staying with the process, noticing how you feel. And I would love for you to share in the comments, what do you feel? What did you notice? What did you experience? How was it for you to connect with yourself in this way? How was it for you to receive the love from your heart? And what kind of message, what kind of guidance did you receive from the part in your pelvis, the part in your reproductive system? And you can also share uh, how do you feel over, like how do you feel emotionally, energetically, maybe the thoughts you have are really what is going on inside of you. Hi, Petrus. Hi, beautiful. So this is a very simple process, something that you can do literally several times through the day. Uh, you can do it prior to connecting with your partner or if you're single and you desire to meet a man or to date or to start putting yourself out there, you can begin to foster this way of connecting with your sexuality, this way of connecting with a possible pain or numbness or contraction in a way that does not pull you out of your body or does not, you know, encourage further disconnection or further a uh, faulty neuroception, but instead gives you a way of connecting with yourself that is safe and loving. And the power of this is that over time you'll begin to rebuild and you know start shifting away from faulty neuroception or from perceiving a possible danger even as you're safe you have shelter you're protected you are an emotionally okay environment and actually allow your brain to begin to register more and more safety as it relates uh, for you to connect with your body, with your sexuality, with your pleasure, with your desire, with what you most want in 
relationship to yourself. Now, one of the powerful questions I have received um, actually this week inside of my Central Intelligence membership is from a woman who has highly activated fear in her body, highly activated fear as it relates to sexuality. And she does know that she needs to, you know, uh, like completely rewire her system so she can experience safety as it relates to sexual connection. And she asked me, it's like, you know, what is, what is the fast track to creating safety and like turning off the faulty neuroception and actually creating sexual pleasure and sexual health. And the truth is the fastest way is for your brain to be registering safety whenever you are safe. So as much as possible, when you are safe, whether you are brushing your teeth or you're curling under blanket, or you are lovingly looking into your partner's eyes, or you're experiencing goodness in your body, the more you can start registering the safety of that, the more you'll be building a nervous system that is primed for connection, that is primed for intimacy, that is primed for sexual pleasure. It does not have to hurt to work beautiful woman, and it does not have to take 10,000 years to get out of sexual suffering into place of sexual pleasure and making love all night long. So if you want to connect with me in a deeper way and see how I can serve you through either my Central Intelligence membership or through my one-on-one -on -one consulting, feel free to book in for a strategy call session, which you can do on www.flourishchat.com is flourishchat.com or you can follow the link in the description of this video. We're going to connect, we're going to have a beautiful heart to heart and I will help you understand what it would truly take for you, for your body and for your sexuality to turn off and say goodbye to pain, to numbness and trauma and actually activate the healing codes inside of your body so you and your partner can connect in a sexually intimate way and make love all night long. Thank you so much for being here with me today. It has been beautiful serving you this way. Um, if you have any thoughts, any questions, any comments, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Same holds true if you're watching on replay. I love to come back to what you are chewing on, what you're processing, what you're digesting. Uh, this is the world of sexual healing. This is the world of creating a radical shift of healing inside of your body and stepping and creating relationship with yourself as a woman that is based on love that is based on connection and that allows you to feel incredible in every cell of your being every single day every single moment sending you much love gorgeous woman have a beautiful rest of your day have a beautiful rest of your weekend and i will see you very soon